Hi, this is Justin Coletti. You may know me from Sonic Scoop, but today I am on the Plugin Alliance channel, and we are talking to Casson Crooker. He is an electronic musician and a composer who now works with THX as one of the leads in developing products, particularly for their spatial audio line. THX has just come out with their first plugin for Plugin Alliance, the THX Spatial Creator, and I want to get a sense of what it does, why we might use it. To my understanding, Spatial Creator is a way to bring in immersive three-dimensional audio sounds into two-channel music mixes and other stereo mixes without the need for any special equipment or crazy multi-speaker setups. Do I have that about right, Kasson? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. We're we're excited about this plugin. It's our first foray into creating uh, creator tools for musicians or video producers. And uh, we've released uh, game audio plugins in the past. And many people may know our spatial audio technology from using Razer headsets or laptop with spatial audio, but we're excited to uh, dip our toe into the water of DAW plugins. Right, we're glad to have you in this space. Uh, any of you who are watching this, if you've ever seen a movie or played a video game, you've probably seen the letters THX before, and it's great to be able to bring you guys up in the DAW. Before we get into specifically what Spatial Creator was designed to do and how we might use it in our music mixes, just a general question. What is spatial audio? What differentiates it from other things we might have heard of, like uh, surround sound or Atmos? And why is it of benefit to people working on music mixes? Sure, yeah. I mean, this can, we can go very deep on the sort of academics and science, but at, a, you know, at its core, humans hear the world around us through our ears. And that's how we perceive how close and far things are away from us, where they are in space all around us whether they're pointed at us. And so many years ago, decades ago, in fact, um, some different technologies start to emerge to create spatial audio uh, with, uh, in the audio domain with recording technology. And there's ambisonic, there's object-based, binaural. So there's all these different technologies, but they're all essentially trying to mimic how we hear the world around us. For THX Spatial Creator, which is based on THX Spatial Audio Technology, uh, we're focused on binaural, and so that's really um, uh, adding techniques, um, DSP, digital signal processing, to basically emulate how we hear the world around us. So uh, multi-channel, of course, requires lots of speakers around you, um, and we wanted to create a plugin that didn't need lots of hardware or a lot of custom um, proprietary technologies to be able to create this binaural audio. So our focus has been on that. And so to go a little bit deeper, binaural audio basically uh, applies filters that sort of mimic how our ears hear the world around us, and then also runs your audio through a virtual room simulator. So we're simulating early reflections off different walls around you, and then the late reflections, which re creates more of the reverb wash that we would know in a traditional reverb. Right. So I, I think people are going to be attracted to this idea of being able to get kind of more three-dimensional, more immersive, more 360 sounds without needing special equipment. But how have you seen people using that in music mixes? What are some of the sounds that you can achieve with something like Spatial Creator that you can't with a conventional, say, stereo reverb? Sure, yeah. I, I think of our plugin as another tool in your toolkit, like a reverb or a compressor or EQ. It's a way to add something to your mix that might benefit an instrument and have it stand apart from other elements in your mix. I mean, one great thing about the plugin is that you can create a full binaural mix, and that would be every single sound in your mix is getting binauralized in some manner. You know, your guitar solo is flying around your head, and the drums sound like they're in the room in front of you, and the uh, string section sounds like they're in a, in a concert hall, for instance. But the other approach is that you don't have to go all the way to that uh, level. You can just add it to individual tracks. So um, some instruments that really benefit from it are um, if you're a singer-songwriter and you've got vocals, but you recorded it in your studio, very dry and close mic'd, here's a way to bring your vocal into different kinds of rooms so it sounds more natural, like the person is in the room with you singing, rather than a, a, a sort of a you know very close and sterile feeling, especially um, as uh, mix engineers and listeners out there know, um, when you wear headphones, it's in your head. You sort of hear that a lot. The sound is really in your head. And one of our goals and aspirations with our plugin is to create that out of your head in the real world feel. Um, but the other cool thing is that not only can you create very realistic sounding spatial audio experiences, you can also add them as really wild effects. So if you want sort of an 8D sound where something is flying around your head 
or something starts far away, like a sound design and goes by you and dopplers by you. And you need to get that change from the very reverberant sound to very dry as it passes your ear. You can do some really interesting things. So again, it's basically the kind of music you're making, the kind of music you're mixing. And you just have to think, oh, I want to do something special with this. This is a great plugin to add that sort of special sauce. Very cool. Yeah, for applying it to single instruments in a dense mix, I could imagine something like this being really interesting on background vocals, synth pads, synth leads, par solos, maybe special kind of featured percussion moments, or just kind of some of those transitional periods in songs that just want a little bit of extra ear candy in them. But I also want to ask you a little bit more about this idea of also getting more natural sounds. You talked about the idea of taking a very dry vocal and putting it into a convincing, realistic, beautiful sounding space. But why do that with Spatial Creator instead of a more traditional algorithmic reverb or a convolution reverb? What benefits would Spatial Creator give you that you don't have in those more traditional types of plugins? Really, um, the key is realism there. In an algorithmic reverb, I mean, and there's lots of different reverbs, right? There's plate and spring. Really, what we're creating are room reverbs. And these are chambers and halls ranging from the smallest bathroom to the largest parking garage. And what you're getting there really is the realism of the reflections. Um, those reflections are being calculated. They're physics-based. And so when you place an object in space around you, it knows how far it is away from all the walls in the virtual room that you've selected and accurately uh, uh, handles the reflections off those walls. And so that's where I believe our plugin really stands apart and sounds great is when you're trying to really recreate those uh, very realistic uh, acoustic environments. Very cool. And I think that idea of three-dimensional panning, where to my understanding, you could pan something so that it's more side to side, but also more overhead. It can even go potentially behind you. Yep. It could go in front of you and it can go maybe, you know, 10 meters in front of you or two meters in front of you. So most, I think, algorithmic or impulse response reverbs aren't going to have that option of choosing just how far away it is from you. And even all the way to behind you, I don't think you're going to find that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I, at the best, you might have them, you know, taking impulse responses at maybe one or two or three locations. Um, but with our plugin, you can literally place it in any location. So if you want to give it that room mic for your drums, but that room mic is up in the corner of the room, you can totally place it wherever you would like. Wow, I think that's really exciting that you can have continuously variable placement for depth and distance, as well as the whole idea of overhead and behind is uh, super cool. Um, before I ask you a little bit more about going into a totally spatial audio mix or use it on every ch uh, channel or something, which is interesting, but more of a niche case, I just want to ask you a little bit more about how these sounds translate to other systems. When I hear the word binaural, which is the kind of system you have here, I think about headphones. Do I have to worry about the sounds that I'm creating with Spatial Creator not translating to my speaker systems? No, you don't. And actually, that's one of the great things about binaural audio is that it works totally fine on speaker systems as it well as well as it does on headphones. It's just stereo audio again. So anywhere you put your song that is either fully binauralized or just has binaural elements will play back. It's in your YouTube stream, your SoundCloud, Bandcamp, any streaming site. So with speakers, though, basically what you're losing is you're losing some of those immersive positional effects. So you're still getting left to right panning and placement and all the things we're used to when mixing. But when you put the headphones on, then you can start to hear more clearly, oh, this thing is actually above me rather than, you know, just in front of me. So, you know, with speakers, it's more about things are all sort of on the azimuth plane, um, whereas you pop on the headphones and suddenly you get a lot more of the immersion and 360 um, feeling to it. Gotcha. So you can create a reverb that's still going to sound like a great room reverb or chamber reverb or hall reverb on speakers. And then for headphone listeners, you have this extra treat of just exactly where that sound is placed in space and 360 degrees of dimensionality that we don't have normally. Absolutely. And one thing you can do in the plugin is you can actually turn down the direct path signal. And that's the signal that's going through the HRTF, which is the technology that mimics how our ears hear the world. And you can literally just hear the early and late reflections. So it's another tool where you can dial back how strong the binauralized direct path signal is. All right. One more idea here is one of the most alluring things about 360 panning and spatial audio and making sounds in three dimensions is this idea of movement, of going from one place to another. 
what does automating that look like? Is it a very difficult process to make things move around in a persuasive way using automation in your DAW? It's not that it's hard to do the automation. You can still automate the parameters in our plugin. It's the it's the cleanup of the automation, the editing that ends up being a lot of work, right? I want to have something just move around my head in a nice clean circle, and then I have to copy and paste and edit and get that automation cleaned up. So one of the things we wanted to add to our plugin was a feature that lets you simulate automation without having to go through all of the work and cleanup and editing of that automation. So we added a, a feature called Motion, and that is essentially a auto panner, next generation auto panner. It allows you to move, just take your sound, move it around the head, create ovals, circles, front or left auto panning, forward or back auto panning. And so you can quickly turn that on, set the speed in what direction. You can set how far it is away from your uh, center listening point, which is your headphones. And then you can just let it run. And so it's a great feature to go to before you start to, you know, arm all of your automation tracks and record and clean it all up. So it's a feature we're very excited to add. Very interesting. I think for so many users, the smaller ask is just taking something like a vocal or your background vocal bus or your synth bus or a lead element or a percussion element and binauralizing it and making that fun. But for people who did want to make a whole binaural mix, that is a whole binaural experience, what are some of the ways that people go about using that? What does the workflow look like? And what kinds of experiences could you create by binauralizing everything in the mix? Sure. Yeah, there's a couple different ways. Um, the way I approach it is that I take every track in my mix and I apply the plugin individually. That gives me the control over exactly what that sound needs. You can put the plugin onto a stereo bus um, and there anything going to that bus is going to be processed in exactly the same way. So when you mentioned uh, background vocals before, that might be something where I put all the background vocals onto a bus. I split that bus into two into two mono signals. And then I can create a nice wide um, sound where those background vocals sound like they're in a room in front of me. But then for like a guitar solo, I'm going to, I don't want to bust that. I'm going to want to do the actual binaural processing specifically on that guitar solo so that I can craft the right room reverb tone, um, any EQ changes I might want to do. So I sort of think it about it like, well, what do I want to group together and how unique do they need to be? Right. So if you wanted to go crazy, it sounds like you could take a single microphone, record a whole bunch of instruments with it, same place, same mic setup, and then afterward place each of those different instruments into a different spot in the soundstage, whether that's further from you, closer to you, side to side, or even up overhead or behind you. So I think that's a really potentially interesting experience that I'd love to see people doing more work with. But I love that the barrier to entry is so low where you can just start playing around with this on one element and just have it be a complement to the kinds of things you're already doing. Very cool. So we already have a video out on this channel where you can look at a deep dive into the THX Spatial Creator. Be sure to check that out. We'll put the link in the descriptions down below. But really the best way to get into it is to try it out for yourself. Just go over to plugin-alliance.com where you can try out this or any of the other plugins that Plugin Alliance have for free for two weeks. Or if you don't have it already, just get the mega subscription bundle. You can get a 30-day free trial on that or just become a subscriber. In my opinion, it is one of the biggest steals in the world of pro audio. You can get access to all of the plugins in the Mega Subscription Bundle. And the THX Spatial Creator is now just another tool in the Mega if you are a subscriber. One last quick question for you, Cassin. What's it like on DSP usage? There are some reverbs, impulse response reverbs that can be real power hogs. And if you're talking about potentially, if you did a crazy binaural mix with this on every single track, it could be a lot of instances. What's the DSP efficiency like on this compared to other types of you know, ambient style plugins? And uh, is, is that something that people have to worry about? Not really. I mean, it's the same. It's very much in the same ballpark as reverbs or other binaural plugins that are out there. There, you know, there are a few considerations. Um, you know, I think I, I haven't had any issues. My mixes tend to be around forty to sixty tracks, and I put it on every single instance there. Um, in some cases, I like to um, bake the binaural in and flatten or freeze the track. I can then do some processing later on to that file, but I haven't noticed any issues. It's, it's very similar to using another reverb from your toolkit. And this doesn't necessarily even have to be the last plugin in your chain, right? You could use this and then put standard conventional stereo effects after it in your chain, right? That's correct. Yeah, you can put anywhere in your chain. The consideration there is that anything you put post the plugin um, may start to undo some of the localization aspects. So if you do um, EQ afterwards or compression, 
you'll obviously alter the signal with that. And that might make, um, you might hear that in elevation. Elevation is very susceptible to some of those post-processing. But if you place a lot of sounds on the azimuth plane around you, you um, and then process them after the plugin, you shouldn't see too much degradation. Gotcha. So if you really want to get those overhead kinds of effects, consider putting this last in your chain. Exactly. Awesome. Very cool. All right. Well, Kazan, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us about this plugin today. You guys can check it out over at plugin-alliance.com. Big thanks to Kazan and to THX for making this one available to you Plugin Alliance users. I'm really excited to check it out for myself. Thanks for hanging out with us. This has been Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop on the Plugin Alliance channel. See you next time.